Hey guys, Sack Daddy here with my second video in my Heroes 3 for Beginners series. Now, in this video, we're just gonna kind of start to delve into a into a small scenario, a small map, and just kind of like show you, you know, where things are, what they do, kind of familiarize yourself with some of the things in here, get you interested in the game. So to start out with, we're gonna start with the castle town. Castle is probably one of the three strongest castles in the game, if I had to rate them. And it has one of the, my favorite characters in the game, which is Adila. She starts with Wisdom and Diplomacy of Skills, which are two very useful ones. And she starts with Bless, which is a great spell. Now, starting bonus, you can pick Resource, Gold, or Artifact. I'm going to go with the Artifact and risk it, hoping that I might get something good. So, let's delve into it. Usually, you get like a lore message in, in scenarios, kind of give you a reason to why you're doing things. Now, once you're in the game, here is your HUD. It's going to be look a little bit different for you guys if you're not using the Heroes of Might and Magic HD mod. Uh, it'll be a little more compressed and pixelated. But it's all essentially the same. You've got your resources, which for here is wood, mercury, ore, sulfur, crystal, gems, and money. Over here, you've got the time. Every turn is a day. So you have days, weeks, months. Um, so this kind of helps you track how far in the game you are. Over here is your character window or your castle window. You click on things, it'll give you information about them. Right here you've got your uh, wisdom, spell power, defense, and attack. Uh, these are your character skills of which you gain by getting certain things in the map and just by leveling up. This is your spell points. These are your spots for your troops. Here's your morale. Here's your luck. And here's your character picture and, and her name. This button is to end the turn. This button will bring you to your character if you're not at her. See that? If you're at a different spot of the map and you have this character selected and you're like, oh, I need to go back to her, just click it. This window is kind of just your scenario information. Kind of tells you exactly what you're doing, who you're fighting. If you don't really know, you've got dungeon. Started with this guy. You started with resource. So. Looks like what we're fighting shouldn't be too hard, although this guy might end up being a problem if he has sorcery. Spells are exceedingly strong in this game. This is going to be your game options. You can pick how fast your heroes are going to go, how fast your enemies are going to see, and your map scroll speed. There are also some other things in here. Um, quick combat is you don't see combat animations, and there's little different stuff you can fiddle around with, see your preferences. This will bring you to your spell book. There's a lot of spells that you can use outside of battle. Like view earth, view air, summon boat, scuttle boat. This is going to be what you use if you don't want your hero to move anywhere. If you try to end a turn without that clicked, it's going to say one or more heroes may still move. That When you click that, that message won't pop up. So that's basically saying you know I want my hero to kind of just like be camping here so this is dig and in the game you have obelisks which will give you a chance to find the holy grail of which you put in your castle but the holy grail is always hidden and when you get spot on your map you just click dig and then you will dig it and if it's there you'll get it and you can bring it back to your castle to dig you need full movement points and using it will exhaust all of them. This is your puzzle map, which is what you gain from the obelisks. The puzzle map shows you where the Holy Grail is, and as you get more obelisks, more pieces of the puzzle will fall out, and you can kind of see where it's at. It'll be a little picture of the map here. It won't be like that, it'll be like this. This is replay opponent turn. Every time you click a turn, you can see your opponent's move. This will show you exactly what they were doing. This is the view of the world. Just another little kind of tool here with the different little icons. Uh, this is what some of the earlier Heroes games looked like. Some people like that. Uh, this will show the underworld. 
if there is one in the map. And this will kind of bring up a kind of summary of what you've got going on. It'll tell you how many mines you've got, your current resources, your current daily income, gives you your heroes, uh, their skills, their artifacts they have, the troops they're holding. Just a nice little overview window. So now to finally get into the game, it's been a little bit of an introduction. You always want to start off by looking in your character or in your castle, because your character will always spawn next to it, and there's sometimes there's creature dwellings in here that you can draw upon, which you always want to draw upon, because you'll have to probably fight things to gain uh, your mines and resources. Now, this is the like screen to buy things. At uh, this, uh, this. Ugh, sorry, this castle already has some things bought. Most castles will start with a town hall, with a blacksmith, and with a tavern. Actually, not a blacksmith. They'll start with a tavern and a town hall, and usually a castle, uh, which is the or it's actually considered a fort. Uh, a lot of scenarios you won't start with any creature dwellings. You won't start with a market, which this does. You won't start with mage guild, which this does, and you won't start with a blacksmith like this does. But this scenario is giving you a little bit of a boost by giving you those things. My suggestion is always to go for a city hall first. City hall gives you 2,000 gold per turn. It is a great way to get your economy started to allow you to kind of delve into the game. So, now. Let's start exploring and trying to get our minds. Now Heroes is all about strategy. You want to use your spells and your creatures to win battles and win the game. And right now, I'm going to use a little spell to weaken up these centaurs. Centaurs are a first tier um, unit like the pikemen are, but they are the upgraded version. And centaurs, and like most other things, will always go for your archers first. Because they're dicks. Ooh, we got good morale, which allows us to attack again. And we won the battle, losing only five archers. Which isn't great, but it isn't terrible. You always want to scan and try and get your mines as fast as possible. And what happened right there was this group of nulls, nulls joined us, and they most likely did that because of diplomacy, which is one of our skills. Now diplomacy is also reduces the cost of surrendering by 20%, but also allows monsters who would normally flee from you to give them a chance at joining you. It's a randomized chance. Basic is a, like a small chance, it's like 15% or something like that, then advance is I think like 30, and then expert is like 50 or something like that. If they would flee from you, it would give that much of a chance for them to pass a check and end up joining you. Uh, of course, they won't always join you, and it does give you the option to decline them and fight them anyway, but getting this early is a great way to get some cannon fodder to help you win battles. And Wisdom allows you to learn the hard to learn spells. Third, fourth, and fifth level, which are essentially the best skills in the, skills in the game. Without the uh, Wisdom, you cannot learn them. Basic allows you to learn third, advanced, fourth, and expert is fifth. So you always want Wisdom because magic, especially the fifth level spells like uh, Dimension Door and Implosion are critical to winning late game fights. So, once you have bought stuff in your castles and your character's movement is, is depleted, you end your turn. Now, this is a wood mine, gets you wood per turn. This is an ore mine, gets you ore per turn. And now, we're going to go over here, which is a windmill, which gives you a certain amount of resources per week. Every time you go, every, every week you go, they'll have a new randomized resource. Same with windmills. Windmills and water mills, or water wheels, do the same thing. So every turn, make sure you go into your castle. Now that we have city, uh, city hall, I'm going to grab this barracks here so we can get swordsmen. And I'm going to end my turn. 
and we're gonna grab this right here this is a star axis every time you visit that you get plus or not every time but the first time you visit that you'll get plus one spell power and spell power is very good so we're gonna grab our monks so we have those spawning every week and a little lore event and I think we're gonna attack these nomads here this is a crypt if you visit it you can get gold out of it or just bad morale usually I don't go there because you'll get bad morale and bad morale makes you lose battles so I tend to stay away from those if you want to risk it uh, sometimes you can get a good artifact from there so we're gonna fight these nomads nomads have a decent attack but they're pretty weak so I'm not too worried about them especially since we have some spells we can use try to protect my archers a little bit because once you turn them into marksmen they'll get pretty strong use a spell every round if you can give yourself that edge and we only lost not that much and this is a learning stone. When you go on it the first time, you get a thousand experience. Nice little boost. The fairy ring gives you plus one luck until your next battle. Very useful. I'm gonna go back to the castle and grab our new troops, which hopefully will make these griffins want to run from us, which will give us a chance at them joining us. Now right here I just bought the castle because the requirements to get a capital is to have a, a uh, marketplace, mages guild, blacksmith, and castle. And then once you have that, you can get a capital. And you can only have one capital in one city for the entire game. So you can't have like three capitals, but that's kind of self-explanatory. So we're gonna grab those, and it's day six. And, uh, you know what? I'm actually just gonna wait another day. And I don't have enough for my capital. So we are gonna wait. I'm gonna come to my castle, buy my capital, and then buy a few monks. Hopefully this will be enough for those griffins to join us. It's not. So, we're gonna shoot him with an ice bolt. Try to protect my archers because griffins are dirty bastards and they'll try to attack them. They always want to shoot your flying or your shooting units, so usually archers, monks. Most of the time it's your lower HP unit, like the uh, the archers. Ah, oh, they didn't attack the monks. Interesting. If you have a low level shooting unit, like a gremlin, an upgraded gremlin. Ooh, okay. So advanced diplomacy increases the chance that things join you. But basic air magic is amazing because it lowers the cost of air spells. But also, when you get expert, it will gain, grant advanced effects. Like the spell haste increases the speed of a unit that you cast it on. But when you have expert air magic, your hero will cast haste on all of your units for no extra cost. And that's the same with shield, except shield is earth magic, so when you get expert earth magic, all your units are shielded. It's just a... It's a great, great way to really boost uh, your team's strength through spells. So, when you grant chest, you can get gold or experience. Most of the time, I'll grab the experience if it's a, a thousand or fifteen hundred. If it's a thousand or fifteen hundred like this or more, I'll grab the experience usually, unless I'm really hurting for gold, and then I might grab the gold. It's all about knowing what you need and managing it correctly. So we're gonna come over here to the castle, 
I don't want to spend too much money, but we need stables to get our champions. So, we're going to get that stables there. Now we're going to kill these ice elementals. Actually, we're going to go into the castle and get more troops. And then we're going to kill the ice elementals. We don't quite have enough wood to buy those guys yet. So we're just going to buy a Griffin Bastion, which is just a thousand gold. So we can start saving up for those champions there. We're going to buy these troops, though, so we can kill those ice elementals, no problem. Which is going to lead us to many more resources. I forgot that I still can't get over there. Ugh. Ice elemental shoot. And they're actually pretty strong. They're a third tier unit like a griffin. And they're taking out my archers. Bastards. And, uh... Bless makes your units do the maximum amount of damage they can. Which is what I just casted. We lost nine of them, but uh, it's not too bad. We got a little artifact here, Lady Bird of Luck. Increases our luck by plus one. When you get a luck check, um, it'll like be kind of like morale. It spawns above your unit's head. Uh, prior to attacking, and it allows them to do the maximum amount of damage possible. So we're kind of out of money, so we can't buy anything. We've got all this. Alright, so advanced air magic, reduced cost and increased effectiveness, which is usually longer duration, or once you get expert, it's all your units. And logistics increases your movement points over land. Sometimes it's very useful, but I find there's other things more suited to to get, so I'm gonna go with the air magic. There's a pack of Afrit, and I think I can take them. Afrit are very strong, as they are the almost the semi-final unit of the Devil Castle. Um, but I think with our spells, we should be able to take them. Except they're not affected by magic arrow. So we're going to shield our swordsmen. Yep. Ah, taking out our monks. So now. Ice bolt one of them. And three. Make Griffin so I have 22. This may have been a mistake to fight these guys. I think I can still take them, but I'm going to lose a lot. Here, I'm just going to defend because it's going to attack him. And when you attack something, most of the time it will retaliate. If I would have attacked him, he would have basically killed me. So, all about unit management. Uh, probably not the best idea to attack these guys because I did lose a good amount. And all I got was that sulfur ring and the Tree of Knowledge. 5%? We're not going to go with armor. We're going to go with the Expert Air, which is going to allow us to cast Haste uh, on all of our units at once. And it's going to allow us to get a really strong Magic Arrow going. So we're going to come over here, grab our Cavaliers. Hmm. Upgrade our griffins. Upgraded griffins are a big difference. 
And from here, we're actually going to spend the night here so we can get our spell points back. If you spend a night in your castle, your spell points get, but get go back, or if you uh, find a magic well. So we're going to scare those zombies away, and come fight these vampire lords. And upgrade our archers. Almost day seven. So actually, I'm going to go back to the castle and get these troops. Because it'll make fighting these vampire lords much easier, since we've got several upgrades. Oop, that guy's in the, in the water now. He's going to probably... Drop on our land here. Not too long. And, uh... Gonna upgrade our swordsmen. And we don't actually have any marksmen to upgrade. So... We can buy some pikemen. So now we're gonna go fight these guys. Can't actually see what he has just yet. They don't want to fight us now, so we'll take this no problem. And now we have a new castle, which has what our old one did when it started. Not bad. So we're going to buy the units in here. Let's take a peek up here, see what I'm missing. Some mummies, no problem to take them. Check our main castle, do a little upgrading. And now our new castle. Buy some swordsmen. And he just landed. Oh, he's sending a lot of, a lot of people. So, What I'm going to do is come over here, I'm going to buy Citadel, which allows us to have a tower that shoots, and I'm going to buy the troops that are in there so they won't be able to take the castle. And now he knows he can't take it, so we're going to kill him. We're going to haste our units. When you haste Royal Griffins, they can get all the way across the map. And we killed him. And looks like he had a uh, unit on him. Or an artifact. Gives us power plus two. Which is pretty nice. And now we can make it to this guy and take him out as well. Haste all our units. Very useful. We're going to come over here. Attack the beholders. And he fled, because he did not want to lose all his troops. Or, that's probably his main character, and he did not want to lose his artifacts he had on there. Upgrade our monastery here, and grab a city hall for that extra thousand gold a day. Oh, he's back. And there's Malakath. So here... Do I have any troops in here? 18. Sure. That way, he can't just step into the castle and take it. So we're just going to shoot a magic arrow in that battle real fast. Step into our castle. Grab our troops, and I think it's about time we paid our buddy Blue a visit. And I forgot I need to upgrade those, so we don't really have any money. Upgrade there. Upgrade there. And buy the rest of them. Well, not quite. But, just enough. 
Now we're going to head on down to blue. And we're going to buy the rest of these troops in here so we can't just step in our castle. Because he really has no troops. And, uh, we're going to land. We're going to find his castle. And we're going to challenge him. Oh. So we're gonna land we're gonna land next to the beholders, but we're actually gonna attack the troglodytes. That way the beholders can't shoot and they'll do reduced damage. I was trying to get rid of the harpies because the harpies attack, but you cannot retaliate against them. So they're very annoying to fight against. But since there's one, they really didn't do anything. And uh, we're going to go with archery. And we're going to try to find Blue's castle now. Huh. He had more troops than I thought he had. So now we're just going to sit in our castle... Ah, with that spell power, he's going to take it. Normally what I would do is just kind of sit here and defend. Let the towers drop them as far as they can. Unless he has more spell power, he might not actually take it. Because the moat does damage as well. So as soon as he gets someone across... Ah, uh, yeah, he's not going to be able to take it. He doesn't have any spell power. That's uh, something you got to really take advantage of is the towers. They do a lot of damage. So if you just sit there and wait it out, they might not be able to do what they want to do. And I seem to have come to a dead end. So we're going to go around here. Come to our main castle here. We can buy our Portal of Glory. This is our angels. This is our strongest unit. They're great to have. Very expensive though. Oh, here's one of his castles. So we'll check this. Upgrade our training grounds now. And the other castle... We'll grab a monastery. And now we're going to try and take his castle. Oh, we're going to do more than try. We're definitely going to take it. And we don't want to actually go into the tar pits, because that'll hurt. I'm mostly just going to let our... Uh, Archers and griffins do the work. And royal griffins have unlimited retaliations. So anything that attacks it in melee distance will get retaliated upon. And we're going to take earth magic. Because earth magic is amazing. And peek in there, see the uh, spells he's got. And we're going to grab these resources. We're going to grab an extra mage's guild. We're going to come over here, start upgrading some stuff. And they want to run away, and we're not going to fight them. And it was a new week, so we do have new units in there to buy. Actually, we're not gonna grab all those resources. We're gonna come over here. We don't have enough for a castle. We have no wood for some reason. Why do we have no wood? Oh, he took our wood mine. So, 
I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna buy a new hero. And I'm going to try and drive out the invaders. Let's see. What kind of troops does he have? We just gotta wait for one of them to land and then we can fight them. And they landed up there. He's got a decent amount of troops. Nothing we can't handle, I don't think. So now we wait. Oh, there's another guy. Blue's really pumping him out. Lost six halberdiers, no big deal. Now we're taking Blue's last castle, at least I believe it's his last castle. So if he does not get one within ten days of this capturing, he'll be out of the game. Am I missing? Oh, I didn't see the harpies there. Shame, I lost my marksman. So that's Blue's castle, and he's gonna try and retake his old one. So we are going to buy what's in here, and it already has a castle. So we're just gonna have those troops sitting there and hopefully defend defend themselves. I wanna kill that guy that's right there. So we're just gonna sit in here defending. Allowing our shooting units to shoot. Let our Turrets do what they uh, do best. That's a drive out uh, enemies. Always attacking once they get in the borders, defending against the ones that aren't making it in. I could have shot, but just being lazy. So it looks like Blue's done for. Oh, why can I hit? Oh, looks like I'm out of mana. Or out of um, ammunition. So we defended against him. It's a new day. Take a peek in there. Attack this guy. And this lady has tactics. And tactics is a skill that allows you to maneuver your troops before battle it can be very useful and blue should be vanquished by now so 
This is Heroes. I hope this video has given you piqued interest of the game. This is one of my favorite strategy games of all time. It is fun. It is challenging. This is Heroes. Thank you guys for watching so much. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Subscribe to me on YouTube. I'll be pumping out more content videos as time goes on. Thank you so much for watching, and most importantly, have a great day.